What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. A Bad Blood is back, and like the original show, this one has a wild Hell in a Cell match booked. However, that's just the beginning as the WWE has four other matches scheduled, all with the potential for some serious mayhem. And there really was some mayhem in this show. Join us now as we recap the show and look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. But first, let's look at the recap, as Bad Blood kicks off with a Hell in a Cell match as Drew McIntyre takes on CM Punk. Now, it's nothing short of a fight to the finish as both wrestlers look to end each other's careers. Both men are beaten and bloody, but Drew's hubris gets the most of him as he unloads a bag of beads to taunt Punk, giving Punk time to recover, and Punk wraps a chain around his leg and hits a GTS covering Drew for the win. CM Punk defeats Drew McIntyre. As CM Punk stumbles to the back and needs medical attention before he can walk out on his own, even taking an oxygen mask. Drew just looks defeated in the ring. Next is the WWE Women's Championship match as champion Nia Jax takes on Bayley. And Nia Jax dominates early, but Bayley's heart and experience help her get back into the game. After a ref bump, Bayley and Jax are down for an apparent three count, but nobody's home. Tiffany Stratton's music then hits and runs into cash in her briefcase until Nia Jax gets up like The Undertaker and Stratton changes her mind. She distracts Bailey again, allowing Jax to recover and crush Bailey as Nia Jax retains the WWE Women's Championship. The next match is Damian Priest vs Finn Balor, and this is all about Damian Priest getting payback on Finn Balor for betraying him at WrestleMania 40. Priest dominates the match until the Judgment Day's Carlito and JD McDonough show up, giving Balor time for a counter-attack. It's not enough though, as Priest rallies, disposing of Carlito and McDonough before finishing Finn with South of Heaven. Damien Priest defeats Finn Balor. Next up, Triple H has a huge announcement, or as in his words, a historic announcement, as now Crown Jewel will feature a match between both sets of world champions, including the men and women. While their titles won't be on the line, a new title will be at stake, the Crown Jewel Championship. Gunther shows up and calls out Goldberg, telling him he was only joking when he said he was his childhood hero. Gunther then insults Goldberg further until Big Bad Bill tries to get into the ring. Security then hold him back, but Sami Zayn uses the opportunity to attack Gunther, leading to a pull-apart brawl. Next up is the Women's World Championship match, as Dominic Mysterio is suspended in a shark cage over the ring, as champion Liv Morgan takes on Rhea Ripley. Now, Dominic can't interfere, but Liv isn't as helpless as she looks. Morgan uses her speed and craftiness to stay in the game, and showing his love for Morgan, Dominic manages to unlock the cage and dives out only to be dangling down by a cable. Rhea attacks him only for a stranger to attack her, leading to the referee disqualifying Liv as Rhea Ripley wins, but by disqualification, so no title change. The stranger is revealed to be Raquel Rodriguez, who has unfinished business with Rhea Ripley and realigned with her former tag team partner Liv Morgan. And then it's time for the main event, as undisputed WWE Champion Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns take on the bloodline of Solo Sokoa and Jacob Fatu with Tamatonga and Tongaloa. Sokoa and Fatu show an incredible brutality that keeps Roman and Cody on the defensive for most of the match. A hot tag to Roman seems to turn the tide, but Solo and Jacob's teamwork keeps them on the offensive. Cody takes Jacob and himself out of the match where he hits a flying body splash onto Fatu while the Samoan werewolf is on the announce table. Then Tamatonga and Tongaloa show up, but Jimmy Uso returns, neutralizing them and allowing Roman to get the spear for the win. The winners are Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns. But Roman and Jimmy hug it out as they leave the ring, but meanwhile, Solo Sokoa, Tamatonga and Tongaloa deliver a post-match beatdown to Cody until Roman hesitates whether to help him. Jimmy says he'll do whatever he wants and the two run in to save Cody. But it's not over yet though, as The Rock manages to show up. However, The Rock doesn't say anything, instead lifting his finger in the bloodline's We The One symbol, then counting to three with his other fingers. The final boss leaves everyone wondering what's next and what his mysterious message could mean. But that was a quick recap of Bad Blood. What about the good, the bad, and the downright ugly? As always, we start off with the good as number one, a fiery start. A pyro can get old real quick, which is why it's better to reserve it for special shows and special occasions. Using the cane-like pyro to launch the Hell in a Cell match looked terrific, and this was the ideal way to introduce a match that hasn't been seen in over a year. Number 2. Putting the Hell Back in Hell in a Cell Now tonight's Hell in a Cell match was nothing short of a masterpiece. Fans talking about how Drew vs CM Punk restored the cell to its former glory need to be reminded that the WWE did a phenomenal job restoring the match's reputation when Edge met Finn Balor at WrestleMania 39. Nevertheless, if WrestleMania 39 restored the cell's reputation as a butchery, tonight's match took it to the next level, making this a masterpiece of a match. 
Both superstars bled buckets and used the cage and various implements of destruction to end each other. So many things made this match work, including the steady build up to a Mortal Kombat like finish and Punk selling the aftermath of the match by needing medical attention just to walk to the back. Number 3. WWE Gives The Cell The Time It Needs now, as mentioned, many pieces made the Hell in a Cell match an instant classic, including the WWE giving it time it needed to play out. The match's story of two men committed to ending the other's career needed extra time to show how far they pushed each other and just how much punishment it took to end it. Not every match needs to run 20 or 30 minutes, but Hell in a Cell was so good that it flew by like a match on WWE speed. Number 4. Punk Sells the Cell Now, As good as Punk and McIntyre's performance in the match was, Punk elevated things further by selling the match's aftermath when he attempted to walk to the backstage area. Punk limped only to fall, requiring medical attention before walking unassisted. Hopefully, the WWE will keep both superstars out of the ring for one or two weeks to further sell the match's impact. Number 5. Amazing Announcing A Michael Cole and Corey Graves did everything wrestlers should do, sell storylines, adding layers of tension and excitement as needed, and answering certain questions that fans may have. And not everyone watches WWE religiously, so it's important for announcers to bring new or lapsed viewers up to speed. Likewise, announcers can inject added drama to a match by suggesting a wrestler is hurt or pointing out they can't win a title outside the ring. Lastly, announcers can answer questions such as reminding fans that a Hell in a Cell match couldn't be stopped due to the blood loss or that Damian Priest was risking a DQ when he took Balor outside of the ring for additional punishment. Cole and Graves did all of this and more without making themselves the center of the show. Number 6. A Shocking Return It's been said that if you mess with the bull, you get the horns. Rhea Ripley discovered this tonight when Raquel Rodriguez returned to action with one thing in mind, getting revenge on Rhea for kayfabe knocking her out of action. Whilst this cost Liv the match, it saved the title and judging from the looks of things, Liv's former tag team partner is back beside her. This return, whilst not executed perfectly, will put another obstacle in Rhea's quest for revenge against Liv. And thrills and chills. Or should the Hell in a Cell match have ended the show? While the cage match was better than the main event tag match, Jimmy Uso's return was epic and something fans have been waiting for ever since Solo shelved him. And in the return of the final boss, and it's understandable why the show had to end with an emphasis on drama rather than match quality, although the tag match was still solid. But that was a good one about the bad is number one, what are the hosts even doing? Now, Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill and Naomi each bring something special to the ring and have varying degrees of charisma. However, we have no idea why they were chosen to host a show. What was the point of hosts anyway? It was just a waste of time for the fans and the superstars who should have been put into a match or kept off the show. Number 2. Nia Jax's Hurricane Rana Now Nia Jax continues to show she's willing to add to her arsenal, whether it's counters or submission holds. However, Nia stepped miles out of her comfort zone tonight when she attempted a Hurricane Rana, a move she failed at miserably. Considering Jax's reputation for potatoing opponents and the inherent danger her size creates should she land wrong, this is one move she should be banned from ever using. Number 3. Vince Was Right It looks like the WWE opened the door for Goldberg to get his retirement match, apparently against Gunther by judging by tonight's confrontation between the two. Unfortunately, it also looked like Vince McMahon was right in turning down Goldberg's request for a final match in the WWE. The idea of Goldberg vs Gunther is a lose-lose proposition, not only for the fans but the wrestlers themselves. Goldberg vs an undercard wrestler might work, but Goldberg against one of the future megastars of the WWE? Just bad on so many levels. Number 4. A Disastrous Finish Aria vs Liv was a good match, but that was until the finish, which is what fans are still trying to figure out. Bringing Raquel Rodriguez back to save Liv's title was good, but the match lost all control when Rhea left the ring to attack Dominic, turning a good match into a disappointment and making Raquel's return less meaningful. Number 5. Tiffy Time Is Tired Now it seems that the repeated teasers of Stratton going to cash in a money in the bank briefcase only for Nia Jax to spring to life and make Tiffy think twice is kinda getting a little old. The WWE needs to follow through on the cash in or find some other ways to freshen things up because it's getting boring. And Cody's entrance was a bit of a miss. Now the WWE is known for its spectacular entrances, but tonight's marching band entrance for Cody fell flat. The band seemed to struggle with Cody's theme song and it really wasn't the right fit, though many are saying that it was more a production failure from WWE. While the orchestra for Roman's entrance was a bit better, this was a situation where the WWE should have stuck with what's brought both men to the dance. Their regular entrance themes. That was nothing downright ugly, it was a wildly uneven show that featured two forgettable women's title matches, both largely due to the finishes, and an underwhelming grudge match between Balor and Damian Priest. Nevertheless, the opening and closing matches were so off the scale that WWE could have put Apollo Crews vs Giovanni Vinci in the middle and fans would still give the show two big thumbs up. 
What do you guys think of Bad Blood? Let us know in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.